In this video, we're going to talk about the morphological patterns of acute inflammation. We've talked about in previous videos the process of uh, acute inflammation. In this video, we're going to talk about, well, what does, the, what does it look like? Um, what, what can we, if we have, if we're looking at it in our hand or on our arm or, or with our eyes, what does acute infl inflammation look like on kind of a macroscopic uh, appearance, if you will? Um, there are three types, and the reason why that we need to kind of know this is because it gives a clinician an, uh, an intuition or an insight of the process of what's happening kind of on a biochemical or a molecular level. And there's three types of um, of you know inflammation that we'll talk about. The first one we're going to talk about is serous inflammation. Serous is more of kind of watery if you will. Um, it usually um, comes from either the serum in your blood which is mostly just water and proteins. I think serum is, is everything that that's your plasma is considered except the clotting factors and, and, and things of that nature. But it's more of just kind of a watery type of, of, a, of an inflammation and there's not a lot of protein in it. Um, an example is this, of this is like a, a sun blister. If you get sunburn and you get a blister or if you're working in the yard and you get a blister from not wearing gloves if you're shoveling shoveling dirt or something. Uh, if you get some kind of blister or if you're hiking and you, you know, wearing new shoes and you don't you don't wear uh, uh, you know proper proper gear then you can get blisters and those blisters are an example of a serous inflammation and if you have um, in a in a membrane in a serous membrane bound uh, organelle or, sorry organ or cavity uh, it's called a fusion if you have serous inflammation the next one is fibrinous inflammation. And fibrinous inflammation is is a more serious uh serious get it. <laughs> Anyways, is more serious than serious inflammation because the uh uh blood vessel here has bigger holes in it. Remember part of the acute inflammation is uh, increased vascular permeability or make, sh make that the vascular wall is more porous. So more proteins getting out. There's a, a protein called fibrinogen. And as it escapes out of the blood vessel, this is a vessel, a blood vessel. As it escapes out of the blood vessel, you know you got you got cells out here and you got micro or macrophages and they will phagocytize this fib fibrinogen and it will you know if it's not too bad of an injury um, then it will phagocytize this fibrinogen and it will return to normal and you won't lose any function but if it's too severe then these fibrinogen will um, cause fibroblasts if it's um, severe then fibroblasts will come in and these cell types lay down um, collagen and different uh, structural proteins that will kind of help stabilize the tissue area and you'll get angiogenesis angiogenesis which is this is refers to blood vessels and this is creating or originating so you will get new blood vessels that will kind of grow into the area and that also will cause fibrosis and you know you have you know let's say you have a heart here and then on the outside of the heart there's a there's a membrane or a sac called the pericardial sac and there's a serous membrane in here 
that that um, secretes serous fluid and it kind of you know because this heart is pumping pumping in and it's pumping out and to reduce friction there's a there's a membrane there's kind of a serous fluid that uh, is around here and if you have fibrinous inflammation in this pericardial sac this fibrinogen will come in here and it will kind of connect 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 up with the heart or connect up with his pericardial sac and you'll reduce the amount of uh, heart pumping that can can occur so fibrinin fibrinin fibrinous inflammation um, is can be kind of a devastating devastating type of inflammation and the last one is superative or purulent inflammation and this just is is pus so there's certain bacteria that um, bag, bacteria that promote um, pus staphylococci are a certain type of bacteria that promote pus or if there's a lot of neutrophils and dead tissue in an area that will increase the pus and you usually have um, abscesses and those are uh, just balls or, or accumulation of pus and what you'll see at the end of of the abscess is you know let's say here is the is the pus what you'll see is you'll see all these uh, leukocytes these or neutrophils or these blood uh, white blood cells surrounding this necrotic tissue in a three-dimensional way and it will it will be kind of act as a wall to prevent pus from further leaking out and expanding into the area so those are the three types of of inflammation uh, the morphological patterns of acute inflammation you got serous inflammation fibrinous inflammation supportive or purulent inflammation, which is just a pus-forming type of inflammation. We'll see you in the next video.